Welcome to the show. We in the mix with B2 and Marquise straight out of Virginia. And this is the platform for the people. Once more, we are in the heavyweight division. Undefeated Jermaine Franklin Jr. making his second Showtime appearance as he takes on the red hot Jerry Please welcome Jerry. Sir, we are back. We are back. We have some special guests, man. I'm excited about this episode as I normally am, but uh, uh, we got some brothers up here that's going to share. Uh, you, you probably heard the names, but now we're going to get in depth with what they do and how they do so much for here in the city. We have Jerry Slugger Forrest calling the champ, and we got my man Chip Jackson on the call on t- this evening, and we're excited to have you guys. Appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Appreciate oh, no. y'all. Yes, sir. Oh, fabulous. So, yeah, well, if we just real quick, let's just get into a little bit about uh, who is Jerry Slugger, the champ for us, and who is Chip Jackson. Let's give you a little, let's give the, the, the you know, uh, uh, everybody a little bit about your background, where you're from, what you represent, and, and we're going to get into it like that. And, and and I don't want to move too fast, Slug. Uh, let's start. Let's start at the beginning because you got a real oh, yeah, dynamic yeah. story yeah, about yeah. how you got your name. Let's, definitely, let's, definitely. let's start right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, the start of my life was basically a little bit of a fight. Uh, I had a bowel movement inside my gra- inside my mother. I'm sorry. I had a bowel movement inside my mother. Uh, they rushed her to the hospital. Uh, they pretty much called my grandmother, my grandparents, and they're like, you know, if you want to see your, your grandson and your daughter alive, you know, you might want to rush up here now. Uh, my grandmother came up, and um, they were like, you know, you guys might as well get a casket ready. We're going to try to transport him to New Orleans to have him to have surgery and all of this stuff. And they were hooking him up to the tubes and everything. They were like, but he's probably not even going to make it, you know, out of the city, out, out of the city of Lafayette, Louisiana. So uh, my grandmother said, well, you know, you can't die. Cause if you die, my daughter's gonna want to die, and you know that can't be life. So, um, she went in there, she started praying, started talking to me, and uh, I started crying for the first time. You know, so I started crying. Uh, tears were coming out my eyes, and uh, they were like vitals started going up instantly. Uh, it's weird, it's crazy. Uh, they started disconnecting me. I never made it to New Orleans. Um, they took me out, they put me in the incubator, and uh, she came the next day with a Teddy Rupskin, and she was like, you know, uh look, you're going to be okay. You know, you're going to fight. You're going to be a slugger. You know, um, you, you know, you got to fight. You got to, you got to, you got to continue. You got to win this. So, uh, I wind up surviving. Uh, my mother survived after two transfusions and, uh, the name slugger was given to me from day one to, to now. It just so happens that, you know, I use it in the threshold that I happen to, <laughs> you know, the realm that I'm happy, you know, that I'm in, but, yeah, uh, it made, made it a reality. Yeah, yeah. Praying yeah. grandmother. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, the, the name Slug is definitely, uh, it's bigger than boxing. It's, it's a family trait for sure. It's my real nickname. No doubt, no doubt. So as you were growing up, um, you know, because, you know, you hear a lot about boxers in their early years. They A lot of them say that they were in a lot of confrontations when they were younger. Did, did you have that kind of lifestyle where you were getting in a lot of fights when you were younger? You know, like, was it an anger temper thing or an anger uh, thing? Uh, I, well, I got into a lot of fights, but um, it was, I'll tell you this, I never started one. You know, uh, I mean, when I was young in high school, uh, I went to Woodside, class of 06, and I mean, um, I, I, I had my share of fights. I mean, I've been suspended from school for fighting. I mean, they've been riots in my school for me fighting. I mean, you know, I've my family have had to endure a lot of stuff over me fighting in high school. You know, I lost friends over it. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, high school was definitely where I kind of kind of got into the groove of boxing. You know what I'm saying? That's why I bought my first pair of gloves. I mean, I kind of I was I was real good at defending myself. You know, and uh, when, you, when, you, when it's like that, you know, you know how the city of Newport News is. I mean, when when, you, when it's like that, everybody want to fight you. Everybody want to talk. So, you know, uh, a lot of guys would pull up to my house, man. And uh, I mean, my mom's house, dad's house, why have been labeled as a gang unit because of the fights, because of the people out here all the time. So I had my share, but I definitely never went looking for it. You know, uh, I'm not really a... I mean, I would never consider myself a gangster or, you know what I'm saying, nothing like that. I'm just thorough, you know. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Well, let, well, let's bring it up to speed. And then, Chip, we're going to get into your your background a little bit. 
Um, so at what point did you feel like you had to shift that and get some discipline and then take that a little more seriously when it came to the fight game? How were you introduced to real boxing? Uh, well, you recognize your gift, man. Um, my dad, my dad actually had a guy named Vincent to come into his, um, my dad's a neighbor recruiter. So, well, he was back then. Um, and the guy came in and said he boxed. And my dad was like, you know, my son want to box. But we didn't know nothing about the Moton at this time. We didn't know nothing. You know, from Louisiana, just, you know what I mean? My dad's from Matthew. So it's like, we didn't know much about the Moton itself. We just knew it was like a community place back in the day. So uh, he's like, look, man, the Moton got a, a gym. You know, a guy named Coach Abdullah Muhammad, you know, Bilal Abdullah Muhammad Hakeem, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, he got a cool program, man. So let's check it out. And I'm like, cool, cool. You know, let's 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 try it out. And uh, I went to the Moton man and uh, got introduced to Coach Muhammad. And uh, you know, from first from first talk, man, he blew my mind and and I never left. You know, that was 07 when I walked into the gym and I never left. Never left. Yeah. No doubt. Okay, well, Chip, I want you to break a little bit down about who you are, Chip yeah. Jackson, aka Don Heyman. Yeah. Uh, the man, the man of many trades. I'm feeling that shirt too. I'm feeling that shirt. Yeah. Too. We got to get y'all one. No doubt, one. no doubt, no yeah. doubt. We all yeah. played in that. That's, 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 that's that real. That's that real. But so, talk about uh, it, man. Tell us a little bit about who you are, my brother, and let people know what's good. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, where I'm from, the PD. I don't even think it's called the Peninsula District no more. But I grew up in Newport News. I grew up in uh, went to Newport News City Schools, went to Hampton City Schools, um, in the Peninsula District. I grew up in the '90s, going to Ronald Curry football games on a Friday night, on a Saturday night. Um, uh, I, when I was in high school, I had uh, surgeries in my foot. I grew up playing rec league at Doris Miller and Fox Hill. And when I, uh, I had surgery, so all my friends going on to play uh, football in high school, I couldn't play. So I actually, I was in a program called TSA, Technology Students Association, where I started shooting the games for uh, the coaches at Phoebus, football, basketball games. Um, so that's kind of how I, uh, started uh holding the camera um i don't know let me i i shoot and i edit film video i also run two youth programs in newport news uh me and slug uh run the gladiator school of boxing um we got a gym or a war uh and uh i also do a program called the fan project which is uh started off the future actors and movie makers uh, we got a doc documentary on uh, YouTube uh, called Did, In uh, Did Anybody Ask Us? That some of my students did a couple years ago. So anybody wants to go check that out. So um, I grew up downtown, rough. You know how it is. So all my friends were in all sorts of types of stuff uh, around the neighborhood. But as I got older and got into my 30s, I would shoot music videos started in 2005 i started shooting music videos we had a little group called no days off where we would go um all over the city and all in the projects and interview all the local uh rappers the sick bikes the born naturals and all of these guys uh dump squads and gp so I, that's how i started shooting music videos uh we had our dvd called no days off i used to hang out at peddler's village a lot of people know me from peddler's village that's kind of where everybody knew me from. I used to be in there up under Bobo, Future Hits, every single day. Yeah, we were just having like, that Pellas Village conversation today, man. We missed Pellas, man. Be yeah. like Bobo when I was growing up. Yeah, that was well, like, legendary. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, icon, I, icon status. <laughs> I used to run a studio at the Motor, um, which that's how me oh, and uh, Slug ties are. We got, we come from the same Motor family. Um, uh, shout out Mr. DeBru and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. uh, Coach Abdullah, uh, Muhammad. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's, put, let's, I, put, let's put a pen in it right there. B, you, you had something? Yeah, um, well, one of the things, because you're bringing up some of the things you got going on now, and uh, one of, we're, we're proud. Anybody from the 757, especially Newport News area, we, we're, we're proud about being from here, uh, you know, raised here going to school here. And, uh, you know, I always say we are a, a talent-rich area. I mean, you look at 
NFL, we got number one draft picks. NBA, we got number one draft picks. Major League Baseball, uh, uh, we got in the 757 area, the legendary Sweet P. Whitaker in the boxing game. And, and, and then we got my man Slugger, champ. Uh, uh, tell me, how does it feel going to a professional level such as you are, knowing that you represent the 757? I know you were born in, in you know, you were other areas as well, but that 757 area is in your heart. I see you rocking it yeah, all no, the time. definitely, definitely. And, you know, you represent all the time. How does it feel going to that na national stage as a professional athlete, knowing where you come from? And, and, and let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you take with you uh, when you step into that ring, knowing you're from the 757. Uh, it's a humbling experience, man. For real, for real. Uh, the main event! Fighting out of the blue corner. Presented in association with Debella Entertainment. He weighed in at 225.6 pounds. Wearing black trunks with red trim. He brings a record of 26 wins. Only three losses. 20 wins coming by way of knockout. From Newport News, Virginia. Jerry Slugger Forrest! Uh, the thing that I'll say about the 757 is we don't have athletes, we have trendsetters. Like, the doubt. people that you spoke of, I mean, realistically, I mean, when you talk about the AIs and the big show, that's two major sports that we've transcended a style in. You know what I mean? So, uh, for me, man, it's a lot bigger than that. Antoine Bethea holding it down at the safety position. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was 16 years. Like, when we do it from the 757, I feel that we do it better than a lot of other teams. You know, I mean, a lot of, and I, and I say teams in the sense of city, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, man, our team is strong here when you talk about athletes. So my thing is, uh, it's a humbling experience because it's hard to top people that aren't gonna probably be topping their careers or their professions for years to come. So for me, man, it's motivational. You know, I'm looking at the restaurants. I'm looking at the lifestyle. These, these teams that these guys are starting. Tyrod with the Hokies. Like, you know what I'm saying? For me, man, it's just trying to keep up with, with the greatness of the cities, man. It's, it's not really a competition. It's trying to be just as good, man, and just as valuable as all the people, you know what I'm saying, and role models that I look up to from the city. That, that's all it is, man. We're one team. We're just building off each other. I told it there yesterday, you know what I mean? Like, Yo, guys like him, I, I grew up looking at them guys in high school, you know what I'm saying, getting ready to graduate. So to be able to call on him and say, hey, man, you know, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this for this fight. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a blessing, man. I, I've, I've truly grown, grown to love the 757. And I'm, I'm from here now, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm from the 75, you know what I mean? I was born in Louisiana, of course, partly raised, yes, but the 757 is definitely where me and my family are going to be till I die, playing on it. And you spoke and, and, to it to an extent that, you know, from generations of, of, of athletes, the trendsetters, like you said, uh, uh, we, we looked up to that generation. Now you're definitely. in a position now where you're doing some great things for the young people uh, here in the sure. city that's going to be following you. Uh, uh, what, what are some of the, the, the programs that you are now involved in with the young people in the city and the community um, that uh, you directly engaged in? Uh, their passion for the sport along with building those skills that's going to make them productive citizens. Well, me and Tristan Jackson, man, Chip, we came up with this uh, idea a couple years ago for Gladiator School. And we wanted it to be not only an enhancement for kids, man, you know, fundamentally, mentally like that. We, we didn't want them to just be challenged. We wanted to actually help men, young men, and men, young women, you know, build them up mentally and have them physically strong through the curriculum of boxing. But we wanted to teach them the science behind boxing, the whys, um, you know, the, the the math part about it. So we, we've we actually came up with a curriculum together, man, me and him, and, and actually our team, you know, and, and, and we're, we're instilling that into the kids because it's bigger than boxing. Boxing is a discipline part. So if we can get them steered in the right direction with the discipline part, that's one thing. But when we add the fan project, you know, that young film movie makers and like that, those kind of things are huge because you may not want to be a boxer that competes. You may want to be a kid that, hey, look, you know what? I like the rap part about this. You know, uh, I like the, the radio part about it. I like just the film and director part about this. So you may be the one that's going to film us far. You know, you're going to you're going to announce us coming out to the fights. So we're trying to get a program going, man, and we're going to keep the program going where you can come into this as a physical fitness too, you know, and, and build your self-esteem, build everything about your body and your mind together. But we're going to find a place for you in one of our youth programs, whether it's the Gladiator School or the Fan Project. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to tie you in and we're going to keep you, you know, in the gym, boxing, training, but you ain't never got to fight. 
you know, you can get in there, hit some pads, and when you get out, hey, we can go to the studio, and and, and we can cut a, a commercial. You know, we can we can go on, on the outside and let you do a boxing video with some of the kids training. So we're just we're just making sure, man, that these kids have an avenue to just grow, you know, and and, and do it while you're physically fit through boxing. You know, and I mean, hey. What better way to build confidence than to, to, to defend yourself, you know? So that's going to go on for future generations, you know what I mean? That kind of discipline, that, that, that'll carry on to their kids. So, so we're just trying to save lives, man. Absolutely. And, and I, and I want to dig deeper into your boxing uh, career and the process that you've gone through with that. Um, but before we go there, you know, I just want to remind everybody that our platform was created for those who we call community warriors, you know, our active parents, our teachers, our coaches, those who have programs, resources, and support that the community needs. And resources and support comes in the form of inspiration, you know, just like the people we've been talking about. You know, I know they've all inspired me, and I know they inspire so many other kids. And, you know, a lot of times we inspire and we don't know we're doing it because we just being ourselves, exactly. we're just living exactly. our life, you know. And um, Chip, um, you know, what are what are some of the things that make you want to do what you do for the kids? Because it's not everybody who who you know a lot of people talk about it, but it's not everybody who activates that and actually puts that time in and 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 makes a lifestyle that you know turn their. You have to really make this your lifestyle to do yeah. what we do for the kids out here. So Absolutely. talk to um, me about what pushed you. Well, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, I, you know, I grew up around some, you know, rough people in the rough time, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s. So as I began to got, as I got older and shooting videos and my children got older, I got teenagers now, I wanted to kind of curve like the influence that was going on in terms of like the hip hop videos I was doing. Um, I was seeing that my children, as well as other children that I know and saw growing up, they were going kind of straying down that same path. And I seen the influence that hip hop, the music videos had on it and, and just looking at my role in it. Um, so I wanted to start these programs and kind of teach the, uh, teach the youth uh, the business of it behind the scenes, what we call in the industry, below the line jobs, the people that are not on camera, the people that are behind the camera. Uh, excuse me, because I am a below the line guy, so I'm not used to being on camera. This is oh yeah, ab absolutely. And, and, and just off the top of your head, you know, when it comes to a production set, a major production set, about how many people are, are employed on a major production? So, this, so that's interesting. My nine to five, my day job, I'm I'm a workforce. Um, I, I'm the director of workforce innovation at Oakwood Arts in Richmond. Um, this is a, a big part of this boxing program and this fan project is because I'm into workforce development. I want to teach children things that are applicable, things that are help them get uh, jobs, things that are help them be productive members of society. So when you, we have a program, our OA Jet program, which is we're getting people jobs on set for uh, Walking Dead right now, the world beyond the new season. Um, and, uh, when you talk about doing a film, depending on the size and the budget of the film, it may be 400 people on a film. Right. But everybody doesn't have a camera in their hand. Right. Everybody doesn't work with a computer. There's a lot of jobs in the film industry that don't even require touching a computer, touching a camera at all. You got to build sets. You got to uh, dress people, uh, wardrobe, makeup. So a lot of the things that we like and that we're into, there's actually uh, a career path in it, but the youth don't know how to get there. So I'm here for opportunity and access because people that come from the communities that a lot of us come from the underserved communities, they don't have access to these um, jobs and these opportunities. So me being able to be a person who can uh, help get jobs in the industry, I'm bringing people from Newport News into Richmond and getting them uh, jobs on sets and trying to chain our young people up so they can be the next generation that have jobs on sets and then become, become a normal thing, you know, mentoring uh, each other, each one teach one, that sort of thing. So uh, no, it's, it's, it's a lot of jobs on the set, um, long story short, just like Slug said, how the fan project and the Gladiator School tie in because just like boxing, I'm a huge boxing fan, but I own box, I can't fight. So somebody has to shoot the video. The only way you even know Muhammad Ali, because you've seen him in a picture or you've seen a documentary, right. the only way 
you know Mike Tyson because you've seen him on TV. You've seen him on Showtime or HBO. Right. So somebody has to produce that. Somebody's got to do that. Somebody's got to do the audio and tons of jobs. So um, I play my role in that part um, as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, both of you guys, I mean, to be where you at, uh, and I know boxing and, and, and in the field you are, uh, Brother Jackson, is an extreme amount of discipline involved. Um, like, uh, champ, you getting ready for a fight now. So, you know, you're going through your training camps. You got certain things you can eat, uh, certain times you got to work out. Uh, Brother Jackson, you, you know, you're doing a script. You got to have things outlined so that you can meet certain deadlines. Can you speak to, uh, uh, for our, our audience that are watching and in, into the aspect of just how important people got to take the discipline piece in order for them to get to a situation where they could be uh, successful, whether it's in the film industry, whether it's in the athletic industry, but it all ties into what our, our lifestyles come about. And, and, and when did you find yourself getting getting into a mode where you find yourself completely all in to what you want to do, or what you're doing, I should say? Um. Well, in terms of the discipline um, part, um, boxing is a sport, but you can't play it. It's one of the only sports that you can't play. Um, we all grew up playing sports and everything like that, but you can play football, play basketball, can't nobody play boxing. So just that, having that mindset already when you step into the gym. And hey, Nate Robinson found that out. Uh, I, know that's exactly. I, was, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> and, and I'm not even gonna lie to you, we love Nate Robinson, but I'm kind of yeah, we do. We do. show people how serious this is. Like when you yeah, step in, like this is serious. So when you talk about discipline, can't nobody make you do this. You have to actually choose it. And that's a, that's one thing we say in uh, at the Gladiator School is that you pick boxing. You know what I mean? Like in, in football, a lot of other uh, sports, you actually, they have to pick you. Um, if you're playing football, if you don't have your grades right, if you do not pass your AC, uh, SATs and ACT tests, you won't even get in school to have an opportunity to be a pro. Right. But with boxing, you kind of choose that path. You can decide. Uh, Slug is an engineer for real, an electrician or something. Uh, and yeah, yeah. So still fight. And a lot of people say, you, cho you choose to get beat up and fight rather than work in the shipyard and make $100,000 a year. But... He, he actually loves the pugilism of it, you know, the, the science behind it. So um, discipline, the discipline piece, man, is super important in terms of boxing because uh, I hate to say it like this, but you could die. Um, I sign that waiver every time. <laughs> and and, and let's, 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 dig, let's dig into the boxing aspect because for those who really are not familiar with Jerry's career, you know, I, I, was, a, I was late coming in and finding out about it, but I went back and did my research and I've been to the live fight and I've watched him on videos previously and I've, and, and I've seen his work in these last couple of years. And before we even go there, 26, four and oh, with 20 knockouts, am I right? Yes, sir. 20 yes, sir. knockouts, now that's not regular. And so when, when, when I saw your last two fights, my brother, if anybody had, any uh, apprehension on whether or not you was a true professional and a true warrior in the ring, I know that they saw it in those last two fights. Um, and I would, in that last three fights, actually. Um, and I would like to say, um, when it came to that Franklin fight, when I was watching that fight, man, I was sitting at home, I was so, I was so pumped up for you, man, and I was feeling like at the end of that, that you won that. Ten seconds to go. And they're going to end it oh. with a flurry. Both guys wailing at each other. Biggest action since the first round. <laughs> 793 for your winner via split decision. The 989 assassin, Jermaine Franklin Jr. That's a bad decision. I'm sorry. That's a terrible decision. <laughs> I, the, 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 the commentators felt like you won that. And they took that from you, man. And I watched your face as they would, they, would, they, would, they gave the, the announcement and they gave the scores for the, for the first scores from the first judge and they gave it to Franklin. 
I watched your face change and, and same for me for so many times we know boxing has been like a dirty sport in a lot of areas you know a lot of people get robbed but when you got robbed there um, I, I really that was the first time I've known someone in that position that get it taken from them like that and I felt that to the bottom of my heart talk to us about that experience that fight with Franklin and and that robbery that took place and uh, you know break it down where, where were you what was your head what was your heart at at that moment uh, no, I mean, honestly, um, I know I did work. Uh, that was a fight more so with promoters more so than the fight itself. So it's like, like any other sport, um, the powers that be sometimes have a little bit more power than you. Uh, I didn't win that fight convincingly. You know, uh, I could have did more. You know, um, looking at those fights, you know, where my strength and conditioning was, where my head was, I was very, I was very there. I was on. But I could have always improved. I could have thrown more punches. You know, I could have took more chances. So I feel like I left it in the hands of the judges. And that's why I can't be completely mad because I know what I have inside of me. And I know what I could have done. I know what I could have output more about, you know. But um, the powers that be with, 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 with box, I'm not going to say it's corrupt, but it's more so of a, if you don't sign with a certain promoter, if you don't sign a certain contract, you know, uh, it could hinder the win or the loss. And uh, for that particular fight, um, I kind of chose not to sign certain contracts. Um, won't dig into it too much, but I made sure that we were, me and my manager made sure that I was protected. You know, we got paid the most on that fight card. You know, we were protected the most on that fight card. And uh, when people don't like that, you know, uh, sometimes it, it can, it can, you know, it can divert the way that you win or lose. But I actually won that fight in the sense of, I mean, that's kind of what put me on the map. You know, that that's what made people start to notice me. Uh, I mean, without that fight, I wouldn't be fighting on pay-per-view. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, that that fight alone has, has grown my audience tremendously, tremendously. You, you definitely proved it. You definitely proved it. Uh, and then we went on and um, you were supposed to fight Jarrell Miller, Big yes. Baby. And yeah. I think he, he's maybe been caught twice. With, yeah, you know, yeah, it's like three or four times now. Yeah, yeah. And maybe three times, you know. And, and you know, we know that's a part of the sport, um, and, and you know, just the history of the sport. But as far as you, man, I, like I say, I, I watched you dig deep, and rarely do I get do, do we get the chance to have a conversation with a true heavyweight contender who is in those moments, eighth round, ninth round, where you can see it's going back and forth, back and forth. What is what what is that in you that that when you um, dig that deep in the eighth, ninth, tenth round and you know you gotta continue on and you go on blow for blow, what what is it in you? How can you pull that out of you at those points in order to man, um, sustain? Man, that's God. That's the ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you gotta find it. For real, for real. Uh, from the Franklin fight, even the Tacom fight, you know, being froze for the first couple rounds, thinking I was supposed to knock him out. That I'm supposed to knock him out and then having to refocus, readjust the whole game plan. You know, uh, you, you just got to be cognizant of who you are the whole time. You know, you can't, the, the thing about boxing is you can't lose yourself inside the brain. Yeah. You got to find it. You know, uh, we don't have substitutions. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we sign waivers, realistically, we sign waivers that say, you know, we can die in this ring, you know, before this fight. So, Man, when you're getting hit, when, you, when you're hitting back, you know, the, the thing that you got is you're not going to get knocked out. You're not going to stop. You ain't going to lose. You're not going to stop throwing punches. So, I mean, it's the mental aspect, man, of, of the actual building process before you get in there. Uh, the old saying, you know, it's done in the dark, come to the light. Well, what you do in the dark in the ring, well, I mean, you know, what, what you do in the training, what, what you do with your, with your meal prep, your, your, your preparation, all that's going to show in the ring. So, you know, for me, it's just making sure that I do the right thing so that I can transcend what I'm in the room. Because it, it's, you know, when I was at, when I was fighting at the temple, it's a little different because I can feed off the energy. You know, I know everybody there is, is me. You know, in that crowd, it's, it's split. Some are cheering for you, some are not. So you got to find it, man. You got you to will up that passion inside the ring by yourself. You and your coaches have to have that, that, that mirage, you know, to just cover yourself in that shield and just, just push forward. And, and yeah. I, you, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. And I was just going, you know, you, you mentioned something about the preparation. Uh, when I have opportunities to speak to young people and, and, and former coach myself and just telling them game day is not something that you just show up. 
boxing match is not something you just gonna show up when they call your name to come into the ring. Uh, Brother Jackson, you putting together a, a production. You just don't show up one day and say, we're gonna start filming. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, this is for you right here, Brother Jackson. Uh, when you put a production together, talk a little bit about the preparation. Cause sometimes a lot, uh, you know, we have people that want to skip the preparation and just want the glory. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, Slugger, can you can, you know, uh, and you can talk a little bit about, about, you know, as you get prepared for your fight, what it entails for you to get ready for that one fight that lasts maybe at the most, what, an hour, <laughs> uh, or, 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 if that. And But yeah. it, it's so much that goes into it. Can you, can you speak too much about how you prep, prepare yourself, Brother Jackson, for a production and then, uh, 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 Champ, how you going to get prepared for your fight coming up? Yeah, well, we have a little saying, you guys probably know those five Ps, prior preparation prevents poor performance. Um, that's that's the bottom line. Preparation is everything. How you practice is how you play. Uh, we heard uh, practice makes perfect, but we like to say perfect practice makes perfect. Because um, you can set in the wrong skills as well. You can you can set in, set in practice bad habits as well. And that becomes a... a uh, a thing that sets in. So uh, when it comes to, prepare, pre to preparing for a project, whether it's video, whether it's a fight, you really just got to go in there and give it it all, give it your all. Um, in terms of the film, um, preparation is important because we, somebody writes a script, we got to read the script way before we even shoot it. We got to set scene for scene, shot for shot, what's going to be going on, every background, the way somebody looks, every time you watch a show, watch a movie, the person that's walking by, all the license plates, none of that is an accident. Um, that's somebody's job to make sure when you watch uh, what they call a period piece, you might watch a movie like Malcolm X that takes place in the 50s or 60s, and you we watch the movie and look in the background to make sure that's a really old school. They was clowning the, the uh, Tupac movie a couple of years ago. They say somebody had an iPhone in the Tupac movie. IPhone was back then. But all of that is a part of the preparation. Um, right. right now, uh, for the show that we're working on, we're in um, pre-production. Because uh, you got to prep before the production, the production that actual shooting goes on, you got pre-production, then you got production and post-production. So there's a whole planning uh, portion that goes on when, when it comes to anything uh, that you're doing for real, not even just film or boxing, but in life. Uh, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You know, right, that's right. And Jerry, so from the time you stepped into the gym to the time you became a professional and had your first professional fight, how many years had gone by? Uh, so from my first amateur fight to my professional debut took seven years. Um, yeah. seven years. That's uh, a golden number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, granted, I could have been I could have been amateur longer or shorter. Um, I it's just it just was the time for me. Uh, you know, I won every state tournament. I won every regional tournament. Always was the nationals. Um, you know, semis, finalists. So, and that was with working. You know, that was a full time job, full father, full full husband. So, um, my my lifestyle kind of demanded it. You know, you you have people looking at you, you have people watching it all the time. So, for me, it was more so a step of, am I gonna? You know, it it, it was like a short thing. You know, am I gonna really do it? Because you you can you can only get into this boxing game, and you can really get yourself hurt only if you're not really true to it. So I, I told myself, you know, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna give myself a real chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna try to do the best that I can to make sure that I, I'm safe. You know, uh, Coach Dula always said, you know, the job of the coach is to make sure you make it home back to your, to, to your families. You know, no swollen eye, no swollen lip, no swollen. So I mean, for me, man, it's the sanity of it. You know, uh, it's what it brings. You know what I mean? I could send a video to my sons and, you know, my daughter and say, send us to your homeboys of me fighting on pay-per-view. That's different. You know what I'm saying? Because now you know me. You know, we, we, you can touch me. So I feel like with, with what I'm doing and how I'm doing it with the, with the pros to amateurs, it makes it more valuable because most pros in the area, man, they got to go out of town. You know, y'all were able to see me fight here in Virginia, you know what I'm saying? That's that's not easy. That's a lot of money to have that one little fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the Masonic Temple, that's fifty, sixty thousand dollars, and that's not even including the overheads, the, the lights. So I mean, you know, uh, it's a humbling experience because I, I know what it took to get here. 
you know, it wasn't an easy road without a promoter. You know, I chose to do it like that. You know, I chose to work in the shipyard. So I understand the process and I respect the process a whole lot different than a lot of guys that just had it just handed to them in the boxing world. And not taking nothing away from them. Amateurs, you know, I, I wasn't a young fighter. So I wasn't able to go to, the, you know, the, the Nationals at 13 and 14. So, I mean, man, I, I don't take any of it for granted, man. I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to make it to where I've, I've gotten. Now, who, who are some of your, your, your inspirations in the, in the game? In the... Personally, man, like, uh, I like to talk to Riddick Bowe. He, I mean, Riddick Bowe's a, man, look, he's a wonderful guy. Uh, helps me out a lot, man. Um, Swoopy, man. Swoopy was like a big bro to me. Uh, we were actually about to do, we were going we to pick Swoopy up the day before he died. The day, after, the day before he died, mm-hmm. talked to him on the phone. Oh, uh, the day he died, I had just got the phone, maybe like two hours before he died. Uh, we were going to pick him up the next day and take him to VSU, do like this public, we had this whole public speaking thing lined up for him. Like, we were going to try to start getting him out and, and doing those seminars. So, I mean, those two guys, man, definitely inspired me. Um, Floyd Mayweather, you know, uh, I mean, the business side of it, I mean, who better to learn from than somebody that's made the most money in boxing? So, it's, a, I have a wide range of guys, man, that I try to talk to and reach out to, and just regular guys, man. Some guys I fought, you know, some guys I beat, whether it's knockout, win, you know, I mean, man, look, you make friends with these guys, and those are the guys you call on as brothers for advice. You know, you might need some help in sparring. I mean, man, look, we all have the hands. That's, that's all it is. No doubt. That's dope. That's dope. I know um, we we were talking about uh, your your fight, you know, without having the inspiration of the crowd there. I, w- I want to say, to correct me if I'm wrong, you were the first actual pro fighting, pro fighter to have a debut during the virtual uh, lockdown from the pandemic. Am I right or wrong? You were first. Yeah, well, the, so we were the first heavyweights. So we were the okay, first heavyweights. We were the first. So yeah, 2020, we were the first heavyweights to headline a fight card without a crowd. Like, um, and I mean, and that comes from the, the, the marketing, you know, being a good person. Being, a, I mean, when you do it the right way, man, I tell you what, favor isn't fair. And, and you know what I mean? I, like, when you do it the right way, you go about it the right way, man. People acknowledge that. And that was definitely a beautiful stage to be on because, man, I don't think it, they may have been three or four of the heavyweight fights that were that that were actually on last year, pandemic wise, with no crowd. We were like one of the only fights to be televised. You know what I mean? So to know that people are taking notice to what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Well, like you come from from the area where you didn't have the, the best coach, you didn't have the best like. And to be at that level and at that stage and to be respected as one of the top fighters in the world and the country is, is, is humbling and dope, man. It's a blessing. Yeah, and, and I think it goes back, like you said, you know, that the fight that you lost, but you actually, you know, that I felt that you were robbed and the commentators felt like you were robbed. The way that you responded at the end, you know, I, I'm at home mad. I'm, I'm cursing at the TV and I see you went over and hugged the brother and and you, you threw up the peace sign, you was showing respect. And I mean, it, it couldn't have been uh, done better. You know, you handled that like a true king, you know? And so right after that, you ended up getting an, a sponsorship deal. Am I correct? Is that yes, with Drew Dabella? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, promoter, promotional deal. Promotional deal. And so that, that type of deal, to me, it, like you just said, you know, people respect the character that you have. And and that moment right there, the same as when Roy Jones got robbed in the Olympics, how he showed his character during that moment, uh, you know, of being, being a respectful uh, athlete and showing his professionality in that moment where it could have went a whole nother direction. Uh, you know, I think that was really big. It was huge for me because uh, you, you handle that way better than I think I would have and a lot of other people. Um, and, you know, respect for that. And so going forward, now we're here, 2021. You got your fight coming up. Um, what are your predictions going forward? What do you want to do um, as far as leading into this year ap- after the fight? And, um, you know, talk about just some of your aspirations for the upcoming year. Oh, man. Uh, man, right now, the way that we're tapping into boxing now, it's like each fight uh, gets you <laughs> gets you a life-changing fight. Um, to win this fight isn't just big for me. Th- this is a world-ranking fight. Um, 
honestly, man, it doesn't, when you talk about boxing for one, it doesn't get bigger than Canelo Alvarez. He probably has the biggest international fan base as far as a montage fighter besides, besides Floyd Mayweather. You know, Floyd's retired. You're talking about a guy that sold out Cowboy Stadium, I think, twice. So to be fighting on the same card with him, for one, is a huge thing because now America doesn't just get to see. The world gets to see. This is a pay-per-view fight. You know, this is that Dolphin Stadium. Like, this is this is probably the biggest opportunity that I've ever had. And, it, you know, uh, I just wanted to make sure I capitalized on it. So, I'm getting hyped. I'm getting hyped. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, all right. Yeah. When you talk about preparation, man, yeah. I've done the meal preps for this fight. I'm doing the training. You know, like I said, I'm a win camp. I want to make sure that I'm giving myself the best opportunity to win. You know, uh, on this at this level, the thing I learned from the Takam fight is you have to prepare for every fight in every situation. You can't just go and say, yo, I'm going to knock him out. Yo, this is going to be an easy fight. You know, whether they're slower than you, whether you're quicker, you have to make sure that you're still taking all the proper steps. You know, I tell all the kids, all the proper steps. Chip, Chip knows I'm big on, look, practice is cool. Perfect practice, is that's what transcends into the gym. So I'm just making sure that I give myself the, the best chance possible to be great on this fight. No doubt, no doubt. And, and, and I, I we, uh, asked uh, Champ this question. I'll get with you on this from Brother Jack, from Brother Chip. Um, when you look at the production industry that you're in, what are some of the people you look up to that you aspire to, to one day be in that same realm when it comes to putting together uh, theatrical or, or you know any of the piece that you put together any artistic piece you put together um uh in terms of photography um uh, gordon parks is like my favorite um when i think about cinematography in general i try to i want my it, i want it to be like a moving image of a gordon parks uh pho photograph um but him uh john singleton of course spike lee of course um uh some of my favorites uh I need Mark. another snowfall. I need snowfall to come back on. Oh, snowfall. <laughs> That's right. Me and my partner was just talking about it. We got to go back and, and re-bend so we can catch up for the new, the new season. We just saw the new season was coming back. Yeah. But yeah, John Singleton did uh, snowfall. Love John Singleton. But uh, yeah, John Singleton really probably one of my favorites. Uh, him, Gordon Parks in terms of photography. Uh, and Martin Scorsese, you know, he did all the good fellows and casinos. Um, the, the, it's a term called mise en scene uh, in, in the film industry. Mise en scene means everything in the shot, everything in the scene. It's a French term. But um, Scorsese is big on the mise en scene. So if you ever watch Goodfellas or watch Casino, how the colorful suits, how the camera moves throughout and it keeps moving and everything put in place just makes it a beautiful piece of art. Though. But yeah, yeah those are my uh, biggest influences. And Chip, so so what are some of your aspirations for 2021? Some things that you guys want to do? And, and also, I want you to be clear. Tell the people about the Art Center, where it is, and what exactly you guys do there. My 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 younger brother, my little brother is Asa Jackson. He's a, a state art commissioner. Um, Asa. Uh, we got the Contemporary Arts Network building, the CAM building, where we call it. It's going on uh, war. Hold on for a sec. You said Asa is your brother. That's my little brother, yeah. The one who's done the, mur the murals. Yeah, Curl Bailey. Man, exactly. I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. My brother's an artistic family, I see. Yeah, yeah. The circle, the circle just goes right back around. Yeah. I was just going to say, can I say one thing? Yes, hey, one thing about Chip, me, and all of our homeboys, yo, it's click tight. Believe me yeah. when I tell you, we all have a talent. Like, there's no one city. Marquise will tell you. There's no one in our clique that's just sitting around just being like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all do this. No, 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 no. We're yeah. all operating, man. We all have a gift, and we make sure we, we take that gift, on and we're we're making it work. We're Absolutely. It. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Everybody yeah. plays their part, but what I'm looking forward to is going to Miami in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, that fight wasn't uh, with Jermaine Franklin. Uh, I was probably like, I'm tracking, I'm at the fight, but I got Slug's phone and I got my phone. So I'm like, I'm going crazy. Lou developer tweeted Slug. He just added Slug on, it, on Twitter. I'm like, happy as crap. You go back and watch the fight, you see I jumped on the apron after the fight. I'm like, we want this. 
That was, I saw that. I saw you say, yeah, you got this. I saw you. It's not like you said, it looked like you said, you got this. I and did. I was saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm thinking, like, we're going to be fighting Deontay Wilder next year. That's how I was feeling yeah. that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, well, um, good. Okay. Class, love, man. Proud of the uh, programs um, progressing uh, in this year, in the future. Look to work with B2 and his pops, working with the city of Newport News, working with the school board, um, getting our programs more active. Uh, as much as possible and getting slug ranked, you know, getting these kids jobs, getting the young people jobs on, on these production sets, on these uh, on these film crews, you know, uh, bringing opportunity. That's what I plan on doing. Well, well, as we wrap it up, tell the people how to reach you, man. We're, and, we're, and, you know, give them the address for the location of boxing school and also for the can center. Um, the address of the gym is what, 9513, right? 9513 in Warwick Boulevard. Warwick Boulevard. The Pan Building is 9601 Warwick Boulevard, right next door. Parking lot's right next door to yep. each other. Right. Um, Past Main Street, right before the James River Bridge. Yep, yep. Uh, go to fanprojectllc.com, uh, chipjackson.work. Um, go check out our work. Go see what we're working on. Um, uh, yeah, just look out, man. And uh, got programs for the youth so uh we're doing virtual programs right now i got a mise on scene class an eight week program that's about to start next week uh come to the gym come be a part of the gladiator school uh slug will be right back in the gym after this fight he's at camp right now but we'll be right back in uh in the gym working every day so just looking forward to working with more young people and more brothers like y'all said getting involved well definitely man with, with what you guys are doing is phenomenal um, on on all the platforms that y'all are engaging people in and just to try to empower people. And, and I like to say we in, enlighten, empower, and enhance in our community uh, with the talents that we've been blessed with. And you brothers are the epitome of that. Um, I, I, as I was saying, I was getting a little chill bumps, goosebumps in my arms. We were talking about preparing for February, the February fight and the national stage that it's going to be on. And, and I was sharing with y'all earlier before we got on live that it is nothing like hearing from Newport News, Virginia. Yeah. You, you come out right. there, man, yeah. that, that just does something to us, man. It does yeah. something to us. So keep doing your thing, man. We, on my end, all I can to help people know in the city we got we got your back. Uh, we we gonna we gonna be tuned in, and uh, you know, you got your our, our brothers and sisters here in the city of Newport News and beyond. Uh, that's gonna always know who our champ is. Well, so yeah, and I want to put a cap on it before it's love. Before you tell them that, that I want to put a cap on it. See, when I was growing up here, Sweet Pea was the man. Yes, he was. Yes, he I was. didn't know what that meant. I did. I, so exactly. I slept. I slept. Now I slept on a lot on, on a lot of these Norfolk events. Going, you know, him fighting at the Norfolk Scope. I really didn't absorb what that meant. And yeah, when was I was young, young, we were young at the time. Yeah, I, yeah. Di I didn't get it, you know, until it wasn't here anymore. Exactly. You know? And for Slug, man, we talking heavyweight, 20 knockouts, fighting on pay-per-view, fighting That's under Canelo. Fun. He's a contender. He is, it's real. I want the people to really uh, understand the position that you're in, the moment that we're in right now, and why we need to get behind Slug. But tell them how to reach you, Slug, where they can find you on social media. Plug them. JerryForest.ko, JerryForestKO, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Jerry's looking for us on Facebook. Follow me, support me, man. Like, unlike other athletes, and it's no knock, you can touch me. You know what I'm saying? All the other athletes, they play sports. You got to go away to Carolina. You got to go away to Chicago. Yeah. I don't have to go away. So, you know, I always say, you know, oh, I feel man. like I'm a little more valuable in the sense that people can always touch me. You know, if I'm not away in camp, I'm actually an athlete that you can see on TV and you'll see me here the next day. You yeah, know what I mean? You so, out and about. You out and about. You catch yeah, I'm out and about. I'm active. I'm, oh, yeah. Tommy, I mean, any, I mean, y'all see me. You know what I mean? Any, anything that's 757, man. Look, I told yeah, Brian. You got mom represented too. Got yeah, hey, look, hey, 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 look, hey, hey, that's how real it is. That's how real it is. We, we, we want to talk about it. We there. Hey, look, we there. All my sponsors are from the 757. You know, uh, I mean, of course, with my promotional team, I, you know, we get the outside sponsors. But personally, I mean, look, I don't reach out to nobody. On my trunks, it's all 757. Hey, then so before I, you go, I let them know like on the trunk. I don't know if you, if you can do it or not, but let them know going to be on the trunk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, Virginia Villains. Shout out to Sick Mike. You know, Sick Mike definitely showed love. City on my chest. Tommy Rima. 
uh, Juan, man, from Juan's Catina Cafe, man. He definitely showed love. Um, Cavalier Home, you know, George Vassellis is a great sponsor. And of course, District 41, man, great mentor, you know, my brother Bethay, man. And actually, I'm going to have the, I'm not, you know what, I'm not even going to have the district logo on this. He's going to let me have the AB41 on this. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. So, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I man, it's love, man. It's, it's complete love on, on, on this fight, bro. They're going to be out there. Yeah, man. Juan's coming out to the fight. Chipping them coming out, so man, look, it, it's gonna be a party. It's gonna yeah, be a party. Shout out, shout out to Greg, brand news. I oh man, Greg, repping. you already know. He's yeah. gonna be on the show, that's a course. You know yeah, I already know you repping. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, some look, people you ain't gotta say. It. Look, wait, but no, but we need boy. to let them know because you always repping brand news. Yeah. You know, so see, I, I, I know they would be there. Yeah. Shout out, you know, you one, one thing about Brian. And one thing for real, for real about Tommy is they kept it true. And I told Brand News a long time ago, I said, yo, I'd never buy another fitted as long as you make hats for real, for real. Because oh, it's that powerful to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. some people can transcend some stuff and, and, you know, they talk about it. Yo, my man's been on it for like 10, 15 years. Like, so i got to respect that. And it's like, if nobody else going to do it, I'm going to always support you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I just feel like I would be a disgrace to my, to my city if I ever bought another new era hat or a Nike hat. <laughs> no, and every and anything Chip will tell you every and anything had that I, you know what I'm saying it's gonna always be Brian from now on. Like you gotta support your own, bro. Nobody else too. Yeah, and that's why we got love for you and supporting you and everything you do. Newport News gonna always hold you down, bro. Yeah, man, it's, it's, real. it's real. It's real around here. Real. You are in the mix. Welcome to the show. We in the mix with B2 and Marquise straight out of Virginia, and this is the platform for the people.